Bien, luego de nuestro comentario editorial vamos al escenario de la guerra. Vamos a Kiev, donde está el periodista Alexander Krevet. Alexander, thank you very much for uh, this minutes in today's show. Thank you for inviting me. Alexander, today we are in day 12 of the war. What is the situation in Kiev and whole Ukraine by today? So the situation in Kiev and the uh, other regions of Ukraine is a bit different. Yeah? So the Russia is pushing the offensive from the south towards the Mykolaiv and trying to, trying to do something in Odessa. Uh, also, they are pushing from the west side, or from the east side, I'm sorry. And also they are trying to encircle Kiev and Kharkiv. But Ukrainian army is, is repelling those offensives by the Russian forces uh, using the artillery, using the uh, aviation, air forces, and using also the ground troops uh, to repel those attacks by Russia. Dice el periodista Kervet que en la fuerte ofensiva rusa está hacia el sur, tratando de presionar para llegar a Odessa, que es un puerto vital. Por otra parte, la ofensiva en otras partes eh, del territorio ucraniano se está dando también por <coughs> aire y, y tierra, de manera tal de que eh, la situación es bastante de, delicada. Le pregunto a Alexander Krevet la situación en Kiev, porque todavía no ha podido ser tomada por los rusos. And the situation in Kiev, uh, Alexander, because the Russians, the Russian army can't hasn't get into yet. Yeah, they are trying to, to come from different si from <clears throat> different sides to Kiev, but as I said, Ukrainian army is repelling those offensive, but they are trying to bring more troops and we see those footages from the Russia uh, uh, region's borders to Ukraine. So they are bringing the vehicles and also from the Belarus territory they are using for that, that offensive uh, and the invasion. So, but Kiev is pretty uh, empty so far yeah it's it's usually crowded place and vibrant city but now it's so people are gathering uh at around the bomb shelters also around the um territorial defense defense forces uh units on the ground so people are not only the going joining those those forces to fight but they also voluntarily join territorial defense forces for um cooking bringing the food helping the elderly, uh, making a cocktail Molotov and trying to prepare the place for just for, for the invasion if it's going to happen on the ground. Dice, dice el, a los rusos les ha costado mucho entrar a Kiev, por eso están trayendo más y más tropas que están entrando no solo desde la frontera rusa, sino también desde Bielorrusia, que lo están utilizando como otra plataforma. La ciudad de Kiev, de suyo una ciudad cosmopolita, bulliciosa, está vacía, es una ciudad muy solitaria. La gente se busca espacio en los refugios o en esas zonas que todavía están fiera, eh, fuertemente protegidas por las fuerzas de seguridad, de resistencia. Ahora, eh, la participación civil ha sido muy, muy importante porque se manifiestan voluntarios voluntarios, por ejemplo, para poderle dar de alimentación, alimentos a los ancianos. Eh, preparan bombas Molotov de manera colectiva, de forma tal de que hay una resistencia muy, muy unida. ¿Cuántos refugiados hay a la fecha? How many refugees are by now, Alexander? Uh, in the European countries, uh, more than one million Ukrainians already fled, according to United Nations. And uh, uh, our border guards has given approximate the, the same numbers of the people who fled the country. So mostly they are fleeing, fleeing to Poland because it's like biggest uh, um, country next to us. Uh, and they are accepting a lot of people and helping them or they they are campaigning especially in the bordered polish town of przemysl they are open the huge uh kind of camp for the people 
taken in they're helping with the documents with the with everything so if they they want to go to other places they're providing with the transportation with the food with the shelter with the sleeping bags like with everything they need so they are really not needed in those places la ya se habla de mucho más de un millón de refugiados eh, ucranianos en Europa el principal país que está recibiendo es Polonia que es el país con la frontera más grande eh, para con Ucrania y allí eh, se han dispuesto varios eh, sitios de refugio campamentos donde se les recibe se les da comida se les eh, garantiza eh, tiendas de campaña eh, sacos para dormir alimentación etcétera etcétera el presidente Zelensky dijo que había que prepararse para nuevas oleadas de la guerra. ¿Qué está temiendo el presidente Zelensky? President Zelensky said uh, that there, there are new waves of the war coming over. What is he preparing to? Well, the President Zelensky is a, is a supreme commander in chief and in with his team with the Ministry of Defense, with the Foreign Ministry and all of those military advisors he has right now, uh, they are preparing for repelling another attack from Russia because Russia is also regrouping those troops and they are trying to change the tactics. So they're trying to bomb more, more civilian areas. Also, they are bombing the... Um, hospitals especially it was like you hit at the, uh, the hospital in Kyiv where these children with the cancer are trying to heal um... dice Alexander que el presidente Zelensky es el comandante en jefe de las fuerzas armadas es el que está comandando toda el, el, la resistencia militar y civil está en contacto directo con su ministro de la defensa y con todos los jefes militares eh, la observación que hace el presidente Zelensky es porque las estrategias, las tácticas rusas no han funcionado. Entonces, los rusos están replanteándose sus tácticas, están trayendo más y más tropas y ahora atacan de manera directa, frontal, a la población civil, a los blancos civiles. Menciona el caso de un hospital en Kiev, un hospital con niños eh, con cáncer, por ejemplo, y ese ha sido un, un blanco reciente de la situación. Se ha hablado de eh, aviones caza, aviones bombardeos, aviones para eh, que podrían venir de Alemania o de otros países. Eh, Alexander, we read about uh, uh, war planes, uh, that bomb planes that could uh, come from Germany and one other countries. Uh, what could you tell us about it? Has, has those planes yet uh, arrived in the Ukrainian territory? Uh, not yet. Yesterday, the Secretary of State, U.S. Secretary of State Blinken, uh, greenlighted the NATO countries that they can provide Ukraine with their uh, older generation fighter jet, which are Ukrainian pilots can, can uh, really fly on. Uh, so it's kind of me. Uh, MiG-29 MiG MiG kind of jets, and it's uh, mostly from Poland, Slovakia, and Romania could be. Those around 70 planes, uh, th this number is uh, like circling, circulating on the media in the, the circles also. Uh, but we are also waiting for, for the um, anti-aircraft um, warfare providing to Ukraine and preferably also the people who can operate those, those uh, systems. Secretario de Estado Anthony Blinken dio luz verde, dijo que se le había dado luz verde en la OTAN para la entrega de aviones. Se habla de unas 70 aviones, incluso aviones de fabricación rusa, varios modelos de MiG que provenía, provendrían de Polonia, Letonia y Estonia. Y eh, además... Eh, de otros países, son aproximadamente 70 aviones que serían pilotados por eh, pilotos ucranianos. Sin embargo, esa ayuda todavía no ha llegado. El ánimo en la ciudad, los temores, ¿cuáles son? How is the mood among the people in Kiev? Uh, the fear, the optimism. How do you feel, Alexander? Uh, 
Personally, I don't feel fear at all. So I'm very optimistic and the morale is still high for the Ukrainians because Ukrainians, Ukrainians and me and all of the people, they, are, they see people are so united this time. So they are just helping other people in any circumstances, the circumstances they have, it, whether it's a grocery stop or the army facility, they are trying to unite, they are trying to help and push all of their forces uh, onto this uh, victory uh, against Russia. So the morale of the people is high. They do not fear. Of course, some of those people have... Um, uh, not, not in so good mood because of the shellings, because of the bombings, a lot of kill, people been killed and still are dying. And maybe a lot of people lost their relatives and so, so, so soldiers, so, so civilians as well. So when we see the hu horrifying footages from all around the places, from Irpin, just five miles away from here, from the place I'm living in, um, also from Kharkiv, also from Mariupol. And so far we know that uh, the evacuation route from Mariupol was mined with the mines by Russian forces. So the Red Cross said it's uh, this the information from the Red Cross. So it was postponed the evacuation from the town where is no uh, electricity, no gas, no water supplies, nothing. It is it's also in circle and it was is shelling by from the other all the all over the side the sites all the time. Is it, but is it, yes. Are you going to but say something else? Yes. Go yeah, ahead. yeah. But still, people are really, despite all of those horrifying images, people as uh, they just don't, they just be, they just believe in the victory, and it, this belief is really leading them. Dice, la situación que estamos viviendo es muy fuerte. Eh, hay una gran cantidad de muertos, personas que han perdido seres cercanos, seres queridos. Tenemos los bombardeos constantes, los estallidos constantes de bombas, las dificultades para obtener alimentos, para mantenerse en refugios. Algunas ciudades están completamente sitiadas y no, se puede, no puede haber mayor movilización. Sin embargo, la moral está muy alta. Y está muy alta porque el pueblo ucraniano está confiado en la victoria. Y esa fe en la victoria, esa confianza en la victoria... Eh, cambia todo. Le pregunté personalmente por cómo se sentía. Me dijo, yo no tengo miedo. Yo sé que vamos a ganar. Alexander, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Alexander eh, Krevat, periodista desde Kiev. Una pequeña pausa y ya regresamos en conexión. <música> 